Okay, the purpose of this video is going to be to <coughs> create a quadratic equation that fits certain data points. I really like these type of problems because they seem more realistic to me. You know, in the real world, you're going to get information points, for example, and you're going to try to have to fit it into some type of a mathematical equation or formula that makes some sense of your data. So it's creating organization out of chaos is how I like to say it. And there's a real technique to this and I'd like to take you through it step by step. So let's start with our three points. Now technically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find, I'm assuming this is not drawn to scale and it really isn't, but I'm trying to find some type of a quadratic equation that goes through those points and maybe create some type of a parabola like I've just kind of sketched right there, right? So what I'm going to do is essentially work backwards from the points to form the quadratic equation. Now it, probably be, it would probably be a good idea to remind ourselves what the standard form for a quadratic equation is. So let me just write this out. And you might remember that the standard form for a quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to some y. Now how can we take that information and use the points that we have and start to create mm, at least a, a possible way of solving this problem? Well, I noticed that a point or data point is basically an x and a y, isn't it? So I'm saying that negative 3, once I put it through this equation, where negative 3 is x, x is negative 3. When I put it through this equation, my y will be negative 30. Now I can take that info and actually create a system of three equations and solve for that system of equations. That's basically my general idea. Now let me show you how this works. Let's start with our first point, negative 3, negative 30. I'm going to use what's called function notation. I don't know if, you, if you're an Algebra 1 student, you might not know what that means. But function notation means the function of the input, the x, and I put that through this particular function, which in this case is going to be a times negative 3 squared. Notice I'm just replacing the x with negative 3, plus b times x, which is again negative 3, plus c is equal to negative 30, or y. Now when I clean this up, I'm going to end up with negative 3 squared, or 9, 9a, plus negative 3b, plus c, is equal to a negative 30. Now I can stop there, because that's my first, what I will call, equation for my system of equations. And I'm just going to highlight that in yellow so we have it saved for us. Okay, let's go to our next point, which is uh, 3, 0. So 3x, y is 0. So I'm going to say if I inputted 3 into the standard form, I would get a times 3 squared plus b times 3 plus C, and I will get 0. And again, I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to end up with 9A plus 3B plus C is equal to 0. And that would be the second equation for my system of three equations. I'm going to do it again with the top equation, with the top point, which was 6, 6. And let's try that. Six, six. So I'm going to say function of 6, put that into the equation. So a times 6 squared plus b times 6 plus c is going to produce the y value here, which is still 6. Lots of 6's in this one. That's going to give me 36a plus 6b plus c is equal to six. Okay, and that's my third equation.
equation in my 3x3 three three system of equations. Now, you're going to have to keep things organized uh, when you solve these problems because there's, you can see there's a lot of writing. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to rewrite my system of equations 9a minus 3b plus c is negative 30. 9a plus 3b plus c is equal to 0. And 36a plus 6b plus c is equal to 6. Now remember how to solve a system of equations. I could just put this into a calculator and solve a, a 3 by 4 matrix, but I'm going to have to do it the long way. Okay, so let's go ahead and try that. You take two of the equations and you eliminate one of the variables. Then you take the third equation, pair it up with another equation, eliminate the same variable, and then you get a 2 by 2 system and then you keep on solving from there. So it's really not too bad. It's actually kind of interesting when you s how you see these work out. So I'm going to have 9a minus 3b plus c is negative 30, and I'm going to pair it with this second equation. And I'll show you why here in a second. Plus c is 0. Now, if I add or subtract either one, I'm going to add in this particular case. If I add these two equations, what happens? The b's disappear because negative 3b plus positive 3b is 0. So I end up with 18a plus 2c is equal to negative 30. I just added all those together. Now, you might notice that 2 is common factor to all these. So I'm just going to reduce, just divide by 2 in all of these. I'm going to get 9a plus c is equal to a negative 15. Now I can do that, because I can factor out the 2 or divide by 2 because it's really the same equation. If I were to graph this equation and graph that equation, it would be the exact same thing. Now I'm going to highlight that in blue. I'm going to call that my secondary equation. Okay, let's go up now and we'll call this my third paragraph. It's just like writing little essays and these are like little paragraphs. This is like the introduction up here. I need to go back and pick up the third equation now. So 36a plus 6b plus c is 6. And I want to pair it with one of these two equations up here. I'm going to pair it with the first one. It doesn't really make any difference like I mentioned. Minus 3b plus c is equal to a negative 30. Now, I need to get rid of the same variable that I got rid of in the previous uh, secondary equation. So even though you might be tempted to maybe subtract and get rid of the C's, you need to get rid of the B's. Now the B's aren't quite equal yet, so I need to multiply this by 2 all the way across. Okay, A lot of people just will multiply these first three and forget to multiply the 30. Multiply the whole thing or it just doesn't work. In the same way I was able to divide by 2 and not change the equation, I can multiply by 2, or any other number for that matter, and not change the equation. So let me just rewrite this. I'm going to get 36a plus 6b plus c is 6, and now I'm going to have 18a minus 6b plus 2c is equal to a negative 60 multiplied everything through by 2. Now when I add these equations together, again the B's cancel, you add that you'll get 54A plus 3C is equal to a negative 54. Now that could be my equation, except I notice that I can reduce by a third, so I can just m divide by 3. That's going to give me 18A plus C is equal to a negative 18. And that is my second secondary equation. But look what I've done. I've now found common intersections for these three equations. And now I have a lot of these will overlap right here. They all come together down here. And now I only have two variables that I have to worry about. So now I have what's called a 2 by 2 system of equations. I think some people
call that a two by three or something to that effect, but I'm gonna call it a two by two. So I'm going to rewrite my next system of equations. I'm gonna call this paragraph number four. Again, keep track of everything. I'm gonna say nine A plus C is negative 15 and 18 A plus C is equal to a negative 18. I am going to subtract these two equations. That way I can get rid of the C's. If I get rid of the C's, I can figure out what my A value is. So 9 minus 18 is a negative 9, A. C minus C goes away. Negative 15 minus a negative 18 is like adding 18, isn't it? So that actually gives me 3. Let me just move things around a little bit here. Okay, now I'm almost there. Divide both sides by a negative 9. And you end up with A is equal to a negative 1 third. And now I've got one of my variables. I've got my A. What do I do with that? Well, I'm going to plug it in to one of these two equations and find out what my C value is. So my next paragraph, paragraph 5. I'm just going to use the top one. It doesn't really make any difference which one you do. But let's just use the top one. I'm going to say 9 times a negative 1 third plus C is equal to 15, a negative 15. That's going to give me a negative 9 over 3, or negative 3, I'm going to add 3 to this side, and you end up with C is equal to a negative 12. And there's my second variable. Now my only variable that I have left is to find the B. So I'm going to go back to my original equations, and you can, have, you can see yours in front of you, as I can as well. I'm going to choose just any of the three original yellow equations because that has the A, the B, and the C. And I'm going to choose the one that was 9A plus 3B plus C was equal to 0. And I'm going to substitute in the A and the C and find the B. Okay? So it's going to be 9 times a negative 1 third. Again, I, I usually suggest whenever you replace something, put it in a parenthesis. It's always easier to keep track of that way. Plus 3b plus a negative 12 is equal to 0. Now let's go ahead and work this out. That's going to give me negative 9 over 3, or just a negative 3. Negative 3 plus a negative 12 is negative 15. I add 15 to both sides, and I get 3b is equal to 15. Divide by 3, b is equal to 5. And that's my last variable that I find. Now, why is that important? Well, I've just discovered my a, my b, and my c. a is a negative 1 third, b is 5, c is negative 12. I can take the A, the B, and the C and plug it back into my, you guessed it, let me put that there, AX squared plus BX plus C is equal to Y. Let's substitute. I'm going to get a negative one-third X squared plus 5X minus 12 is equal to Y. And that is your final answer. Let me write that up. Now you can see what you can do with this. I can actually go from this equation, I can actually graph this equation, I can see if it actually produces a quadratic equation where those three points are on the graph. And actually it does. If you want to just put it into your calculators, you see that it would work. Okay, I am running out of time, so I would, otherwise I would review what we did, but let's still actually let's do it really quickly. Take your points, replace the x 
in the standard form, replace the y with the y in your point, get three equations, choose two of the equations, eliminate one variable, in this case we did b, choose the other, choose another, the third equation and then pair it up with somebody else with one of the other two equations, eliminate the same variable b and come up with two two by two systems. Eliminate one of the variables then and you get A or B or C depending on which one you eliminate. And then you start substituting backwards until you get the A, the B, and the C. When you're finished with that, plug it into the standard form and there's your quadratic equation. Good luck to you. I hope that helped. Uh, you can play this as many times as you need to. Bye-bye.